This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Episode 49, Fairy Friends. The Weekly Wish List. Four new titles make it onto my wish list this week, three of which are from Kadansha, and two of those are Titan-related. Attack on Titan Before the Fall, the prequel series to Attack on Titan, is the first of these. Now that I'm liking Attack on Titan, I'm ready to get all the related material starting with this Volume 1. Along with it comes Attack on Titan Junior High Volume 1, a thick volume that puts a humorous spin on the series. I've been enjoying Spoof on Titan at Manga Box, so I'm looking forward to this one as well. The third number one is My Little Monster, a shoujo series that looks interesting. Sherlock Bones is not a volume one, but it is a Kadansha title I want to read now that I've finally read the first volume. It wasn't what I was expecting, but I still enjoyed it. The final title in volume one is from Viz Media. Rama Half is a classic, and it's getting the omnibus release that also puts the series back in its proper right-to-left reading direction. I've never read the Rama manga, so this new release is the perfect opportunity to get back into it. Crunchyroll Corner. Crunchyroll Manga has started streaming the first of four special chapters of the manga Fairy Tale, dubbed the Fairy Tale Matsuri or Festival. This one shot stars Frosh and the Sabretooth Guild and debuted in the April issue of Besatsu Shonen Magazine. These chapters are available to all access and manga subscribers only, so if you want to read them, you'll have to sign up. The next three chapters are slated to go online on 319, 330, and 44 as they appear in Japan. This is just another goodie for fairy tale fans as we await the return of the anime, also scheduled to start in April, though in what form still isn't known. The Top 10 Department At Viz Manga, its all new release is taking over the list with just one backlist holding its own after the new guys. For the week of March 4th, 2014, the carousel of new top titles continue as Blue Exorcist Volume 11 takes over the number one spot. One Piece Volume 70 debuts at number two, as does Blackbird Volume 18, the final volume of the series, which comes in at number three. Siren Volume 15 pops in at number four, along with Fushigi Yugi. Genbu Kaiden, Volume 12, which is another final volume. Ore Sama Teacher, Volume 16, takes the sixth spot, with Strobe Edge, Volume 9, coming in at number 7. Tagami Bachi, Volume 16, a title we've not heard from for a while, debuts at number 8. And Knights of the Zodiac, Volume 10, the lone backlister, moves down four to number 9. Phantom Thief Gene, Volume 1, ends the list with its debut at number 10. It's an even split between shonen and shoujo titles charting, of which two finales make it into the top five. It's a little surprising that One Punch Man got knocked off so easily, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it return next week, along with Naruto and Bleach, both of which are also conspicuously missing from the list. But the big question I have to ask is, where were all the Knights of the Zodiac fans when this title was coming out in print? We could have gotten more if it had done well. The New York Times bestseller list has seen a similar turnover in titles with just one title rolling over from the previous weeks. For the week ending March 8, 2014, another new title starts the list. Still determined to become the Pirate King, One Piece Volume 70 muscles in to take the number one spot. Blue Exorcist Volume 11 also debuts at number two, along with Pokemon Adventures Volume 21, which comes in at number three. Blackbird Volume 18 debuts at number 4, with Nisekoi Volume 2 making its print debut at number 5. Nijigahara Holograph from Fantagraphics comes in at number 6, and is followed by Phantom Thief Gene Volume 1 at number 7. Midnight Secretary Volume 4 debuts at number 8, Fairy Tale Volume 35 debuts at number 9, and Attack on Titan Volume 1 becomes the only holdout, falling down 9 to end the list at number 10. That's quite a surprising mix of books. Well, most of it. The Viz dominance isn't all that surprising. They do it every month when their big shonen and shoujo titles are released. The big surprises I see this week are Nijigahara Holograph from Fantagraphics and Midnight Secretary from Viz. Both of these are mature titles, a rating that doesn't make it onto the manga list all that often, though it is nice when it does. On top of that, Fantagraphics isn't a big manga publisher. They're into independent comics, picking and choosing manga titles that they feel fit their catalog. It's good to see one of their choices get this kind of recognition. Nielsen Bookscan for February 
The book scan numbers for February were released, and manga made a respectable showing, taking nine of the 20 spots. Two thirds of those spots were held by one franchise. Any guess which one? The manga to chart highest was Naruto Volume 64, which came in at number three. Right behind it was Attack on Titan Volume 1 at number four. Jump down four, and we come to Attack on Titan Volume 11 at number eight, which is followed by Attack on Titan Volume 2 at number nine. Move another three spots down, and we hit the longest run. Attack on Titan Volume 3 at number 12, Bleach Volume 59 at number 13, and Attack on Titan Volume 10 at number 14. Hopscotch over one, and we get Attack on Titan Volume 9 at number 16, and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children ends the manga entries at number 17. Wow. Just wow. What a way for a single series to dominate the book scan for manga. Kodansha's Attack on Titan has six volumes on the list. Six. This is Naruto was a holdover from last month, only moving down two spots. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children does well to hold on from last month, only moving down two spots as well. I still like to see more variety, but I can't blame Kadancha for getting such a monster of a hit. Fairy Friends The first time I tried to find manga to fit the St. Patrick's Day holiday, I had to really stretch things by pulling in titles that were tangently associated with it. Four years later, there aren't a lot of new additions, but at least these titles actually relate to Ireland and its mythical creatures. Fairy Cube was previously the only title with a Celtic connection. Kaori Yuki's three-volume series follows Ian Hasumi, the son of a previously famous author. His mother disappeared, leaving Ian with his father, who seemed to have lost his inspiration. Ian claims to be able to see fairies, including a boy who looks just like him with green hair and red eyes, who he calls Tokage. This fairy manipulates Ian's father to kill him so Takage can take over his body. Ian, with the help of the fairy Einsel, must journey through the fairy realm to return to the human world so he can reclaim his body and life. Fairy Cube features not just the small winged fairies usually associated with the name, but others from Celtic myths, such as the Sidae, female fairies who feed off human energy, and the realm of the Seelie and Unseelie courts. The series takes some turns into an environmental message and ends kind of abruptly, but it's still a good story. It's available in print and digital from Viz Media. The Earl and the Fairy is a four-volume series from Viz that is based on a series of light novels and had a 12-episode anime series. It is about Lydia Carlton, a fairy doctor who lives in Scotland. Like her mother, she can see the fairy folk and tries to help them and humans live in peace, even though most people think she's odd. Her companion is a fairy called Nico. He looks like a fluffy cat, but likes to stand on two legs and is a bit of a dandy, wearing a string tie and white cuffs. She encounters Edgar Aschenbert, a man who claims to be the descendant of the Blue Knight Earl, legendary ruler of the fairy kingdom. Lydia is swept up into Edgar's quest, and they encounter brownies, marrows, a bogey beast, and his master Fogman, and their enemy, the Sylphs. This series was quite a lot of fun, but feels unfinished at only four volumes. It is available in both print and digital as well. Dura Ra Ra is a four-volume series from Yen Press that is also based on a light novel series and got a 26-episode anime. It has a huge cast, one of which is a Dullahan, a Irish fairy that rides on a horse and carries its head. Dullahans are thought to precede death or disaster and may even be a Valkyrie from North mythology fallen to earth. But the Dullahan of... Durara is Selty Sturluson. Her head was stolen, and she followed it from Ireland to Japan, where her horse became a motorcycle, and she searches for it while working as an underground courier. She is known as the Black Rider, or the Headless Rider, and is considered an urban legend at first. She conjures up a scythe that she uses as her weapon from a black smoke that she can manipulate. While there are a lot of great characters in Durara, Selty quickly became my favorite in the series, with Shizuo coming in a close second. It's only available in print. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, Farewell from the Manga Dome.